Hey everyone, we finally got new updates about when approximately Kintour Pharma will officially release and put into sale its most anticipated product, pyrolutamide, for hair loss. But is it really worth the hype and how is it gonna be different from already FDA approved treatments like finasteride? The CEO of Kintour Pharma, Dr. Tong, announced the completion of subject enrollment in the phase 3 clinical trial of KX. 826, which is also known as pyrolutamide, for the treatment of male androgenetic alopecia in China. I mean, I love China. How can you not love China? I love China. And he mentioned that the data from that trial, from the phase 3 clinical trial in China, which is again the final step in the process of clinical trials before submitting the file for uh, an NDA, a new drug approval, that particular result is going to be uh, announced by the company in the last quarter of 2023. So it's expected to be announced from, let's say from October to uh, December. Dr. Tong also said that if the data comes out to be positive, they will immediately proceed with the NDA application, the new drug approval application with the China NMPA, which is the abbreviation of the National Medical Products uh, administration, which is the equivalent of the FDA but in China. And I tried to look in the internet about how much this process, uh, this whole process of uh, applying for the NDA after finishing the phase 3 clinical trials and submitting the whole file will take. And um, I could find on the internet that the duration will be from 6 months to 10 months. So supposing that the phase 3 clinical trials in China will be announced in Q4 of 2023, as Dr. Tong said, and that the company will immediately proceed with the NDA application, we should expect pyrolutamide to be on the Chinese market on 2024, maybe mid-2024 or the end of 2024, which is uh, one year and a half uh, from today's date. This, again, is the assumption about when the drug will be available in the Chinese market because we're now talking about the approval for the Chinese medical organization. Uh, if we're going to talk about the FDA and the FDA um, approval process, it's going to be um, a little bit lengthier. One, because the FDA process is a little bit more strict than the Chinese NMPA. Secondly, because the phase three clinical trials conducted in the US, which will be submitted with the NDA application for the FDA approval, is gonna be announced in 2024, not in Q4 of 2023 as the clinical phase three clinical trials conducted in China. So if everything goes okay with the results, we could anticipate the results of the phase three clinical trials conducted in the US in 2024, maybe mid 2024, and then the company will apply for the NDA in the United States with the FDA, and it will get it maybe in the end to mid 2025. But I don't want you to worry about it, guys. Once the product is gonna be approved by the NMPA, the Chinese regulatory medical organization, it's gonna be much easier to outsource and to get the product than our current situation. For now, I want to recommend for all of my viewers and for all of you guys to uh, stick to patience and to wait and to not try to buy pyrolutamide from fishy websites, especially because one, you would never know if they really have the original formula of pyrolutamide and two, we should wait for the phase three clinical trials results, at least the Chinese one, so that we get a good and better idea about the safety profile of pyrolutamide. Because again, pyrolutamide is an androgen receptor antagonist. It blocks the effects of androgen receptors. So it has a worrying and big potential for uh, side effects, especially in male organisms. I'm not saying it would. The phase two and phase one clinical trials came back to be quite reassuring, but I'm just saying that we should wait for the phase three clinical trial results. And then you will be able to get it safely and from the original and official sources. And I'm speaking not only to my Chinese and Asian viewers, but also to my US viewers. So in conclusion, if Dr. Tong's words were accurate in the recent press release, we should anticipate pyrolutamide to be released into the market in mid to the end of 2024 at most. But for the second part of the video, I wanted to ask the question, is pyrolutamide really worth the hype? 
I mean, what do we actually know about this product and about the research behind its back? We know two things. We have positive news and we have negative information about the research behind it. I will start with the positive one. We know that pyrolutamide already underwent successful phase one clinical trials with no systemic side effects. And we were also successful in determining the optimal dose for usage in the phase two clinical trials, phase two and phase three also, which is 5%, five milligram twice a day of pyrolutamide application. And we also know that we conducted two phase two clinical trials, one in China and one in the US, and they were massive success as the clinical trial conducted in China was conducted in male group and female group as females also can be exposed to the horrifying effects of DHT on hair follicles. Females also can have androgenetic alopecia if genetically predisposed. And the phase two clinical trial conducted in China demonstrated a 16 hairs per square centimeter improvement from baseline versus the placebo group in only six months of using pyrolutamide twice a day, 5% solution. That's incredibly amazing, guys, because uh, if we compare that to the best treatment we have for androgenetic alopecia at the moment, finasteride, um, the efficacy of finasteride in six months after using one milligram of finasteride, six months, and I don't mean applying it topically, I mean oral finasteride, one milligram per day. The efficacy in the clinical trials back in its research, and I will make sure to put everything in the description, is nine hairs per square centimeter improvement from baseline versus placebo in six months. That's finasteride. When we're talking about pyrolutamide, it's 15 hairs per square centimeter improvement from baseline versus the placebo group, which is basically 1.8 times more uh, the efficacy of finasteride, which is uh, amazing. That uh, is one positive information that we know about pyrolutamide. The second one is the possibility to use it as an adjunct treatment because the mechanism of action of pyrolutamide is different from that of finasteride. Pyrolutamide is an antagonist of the androgen receptor. It blocks the androgen receptor and it doesn't let the um, dihydrotestosterone that's converted from testosterone in the male body to be binded to the hair follicle and exerting its effects. While finasteride is a 5-AR inhibitor, finasteride blocks the transformation of testosterone to the more potent androgen dihydrotestosterone, which is a process catalyzed by the enzyme 5 reductase. Finasteride comes and intercepts this enzyme and it blocks this enzyme and by blocking it, it basically inhibits the production of DHT. Thus, uh, there will be no uh, or less DHT to be binding to the hair follicle and less damaging effect to the hair overall. So as you see, two different mechanisms, the ability and the opportunity to use them together for uh, to yield better results, it, along with minoxidil, it's even possible. And the good and reassuring safety profile overall, at least from what we got from the phase one and phase two clinical trials. So what's the negative caveat or thing that I spoke about? Well, uh, the negative information and the only negative information that we got so far, the only negative information that we know about pyrolutamide is a contrast found between the phase two clinical trials conducted in China and the phase two clinical trials conducted in the West. And that contrast is uh, regarding the efficacy. So there is noticeable difference in terms of efficacy in the increased hair count of 10 in the target area found in the US study. And that is without even comparing to the placebo group, and we know that in the phase two Chinese study, that efficacy without comparing it to the placebo group was 22 hairs per square centimeter. If we compare it to the placebo group, it's 16, as I said before, but if we don't compare it to the placebo group, it's 22. So there's about 10 hair difference per square centimeter, which is huge and um, it's a big problem that punishes a little bit the credibility of the study, but don't get me wrong, 10 is still huge and it's still about the efficacy of finasteride, maybe a little bit less, but uh, what does this say? Well, the authors explain this by the fact that Asian people or people of Asian descent respond better to hair growth treatments due to genetic variants. And I spoke about this already in the video of the long-term usage of uh, finasteride. 
Uh, I've got the video, I will make sure to put it here. You can go watch it after finishing this one. But to get an idea, people of Asian descent have certain hair characteristics, not only morphologically, but also uh, biologically and genetically, they're predisposed to a lesser severity, let's say, of uh, genetic alopecia, so that they often experience better results when taken pharmacological intervention for uh, male pattern baldness. So that maybe explains a little bit the contrast found in the efficacy between the Chinese and the US study, but still a difference of 10 hairs per square centimeter makes me a little suspicious. I personally want to see the phase three clinical trials in China and then in the US to reassure myself and to know if this is a statistical anomaly, maybe that happened um, in that particular trial, or if this tells us something a lot bigger about pyrolutamide or maybe even about the nature of antigenetic alopecia. But if you're interested in another compound currently being developed by Kentor Pharma and has a big and beautiful and amazing potential for actually curing antigenetic alopecia and it's also uh, being developed with a brand new technology called Protex, Proteolysis Targeting Chimera. Please go watch my video on GT20029, a promising compound that's also, again, being developed by Control Pharma. Or uh, you can watch my video on Vertoporfin, which is, again, I say it in every video, but it's really, my, in my opinion, the leading candidate to actually cure androgenetic alopecia. Uh, I will make sure to post and to put all the videos in the description and you can find them here in that card. And if you enjoyed the video and found it informative, please click on that like button and subscribe if you haven't yet. And with that being said, stay safe.